Well, starting off with the standard Naga Band. Let me turn off this uh, net graph. What we have here today is some sort of Dota Fire tournament. Uh, just caught wind of it because a couple of my friends are playing in it. I think this is the semifinals between No Pants Party and Con 2. Not sure what it stands for, but I used to play for that team briefly. No Pants Party, for those who don't know, is my friend Blitz and then some staple North American players. Lust, Agam, Infinity. I don't think Agam's actually North American, but whatever. He hangs out with them. And Mikey, formerly of Quantic. Con 2 looking like they don't want to play against the Prophet. Kind of an early ban for Prophet these days. And they don't want to give Frankie his Anti-Mage. Although there's a lot of uh, other carries he's really strong with, like Morph. I know he plays a lot of Morph. I'm not entirely sure what their thinking is. The last ban to come out from the second pick No Pants Party will be in a minute now. Or 18 seconds at least. The more standard bands coming from the Radiant side here. And it's a Broodmother. Morphling. And they first picked the Morphling. I guess they really didn't want Infinity getting a strong carry hero. Team pick. Let's see if No Pants Party picks up a Morphling. I mean a Morphling counter, such as Ancient Apparition. Remember at uh, in Seattle after the International, I was hanging out with Fogged, and he agreed with me that AA is a pretty strong Morphling counter, and more people should use it that way. So let's see how they respond to this first pick Morphling. A Rubik as the first pick on their side, and they're just thinking about the second one now. Still a lot of good heroes out there. Um, I don't see Radiant picking Invoker, because it's not really a Blitz hero. Let's see if uh, Kantu takes advantage of that by taking a late Invoker pick. A lot of good heroes still left in the pool. A quick enchantress to come out. I wonder if Kantu is going to take a Chen. I know uh, your boy JC loves running Chen or Enchantress, but he can also play a really good Enigma. He'll probably be their jungler. You'll likely see Talus playing some sort of carry, and I think Sinai will be going mid. Not sure. I haven't watched these guys a lot since I stopped playing with them. No Pants Party, of course, is going to run that Blitz mid. He's a mid soloist, specialized. And Infinity will be running the hard carry for them. Frankie's a pretty strong hard carry. Not sure quite exactly what uh, the other three roles will be, but we'll see. Could be filling up some airtime with some mindless predictions, but I honestly have no idea what these guys are going to be picking. I know we're going to see at least one jungle hero from Khan 2, just I don't think they're going to pick it this early. Or they will take that Chen that I called. And Leshrac is always a strong pick. Not necessarily giving away their lanes just yet. I mean, obviously there's going to be a Chen in the jungle, most likely defensively, but the Lesh and the Morph can go a number of different ways. We'll see how this draft shapes up. An early bounty hunter coming out from No Pants Party. It's an interesting choice. I, I couldn't foresee a bounty hunter possibly being banned or picked by the other team. But maybe they're just confident enough in that bounty hunter to pick him quickly. He's most likely going to be run as a solo off lane, Just hide and try to get experience until they have uh, track up and go gank the other lanes with track. Even if you get no CS with that solo off lane bounty hunter, you can get a ton of gold with track mid-game. A lot of teams like to run that these days. We see a Tide ban indicating that uh, No Pants Party is going to want to really win those mid-game team fights, so they can get that track gold up. Rubik's a strong mid-game hero. Tide would be a strong mid-game hero for the other team. team Venno and Silber banned out by Kantu. Not quite sure the logic behind that. Um, they already have a solo off laner on No Pants Party, so they probably weren't going to take the Lone Druid. And Venno's a strong support, but there's still so many supports out there that are left. I'm not sure what the reasoning was behind banning that. Unless they're possibly thinking about a Templar Assassin, but that wouldn't make too much sense, considering I don't see them running a good TA, but we'll see. Could always come out. 
Oh, Beastmaster. So Beastmaster with Chen. Uh, the aura just makes those creeps push so hard. It's really strong early to mid game if he levels it up early. But we'll see if he gets the boar instead. Although the lanes are are starting to shape out more for Kantu, we're going to see the Beastmaster running the suicide lane on bottom, and that Morphling will see possibly as a solo in the mid, possibly in a um, no, he's going to be in a dual lane top with the Chen coming to gank. Also, we're going to see a Leshrac mid most likely. No pants party still. You know, I don't see Blitz playing the Rubik often. I mean, I saw him practicing a little bit the other day. Maybe they're trying to work it into a solo mid-roll, but I wouldn't be surprised to see that as a support Rubik somewhere else. Again, I'm sorry I can't live uh, live stream this, but I don't have a premium XSplit subscription, so I can't put the delay on it myself, and I don't know how to otherwise put a delay on it. So these teams didn't want a no delay stream up. Gotta respect the team's wishes, so I'm just gonna cast from this VOD. Although I'm casting it live, but you guys are gonna watch it from the VOD. That's a video on demand for those in the know. I don't know why they still have these international banners. Everyone knows the international finished a while ago. It even says it here in the dates that it finished a while ago. Maybe they just want to build the brand some more for those who might have missed it or heard about it. Ten seconds. Shadow. Shadow Fiend. So that's going to be... You know what? I'm not even sure I've seen Blitz run a lot of Shadow Fiend, but I guess if they're suspecting the Morphling might solo mid or the Leshrac, Shadow Fiend can pop either of them around level 5 or 7, fairly easily with his nukes. So we could see that Shadow Fiend in uh, the mid by Blitz, or we could even potentially see it on bottom, supported with uh, Enchantress and Rubik. You know, I was kind of hoping they'd pick a Storm Spirit, because then you know it's going to be Blitz's mid hero, but we'll see how this goes. Shadow Fiend's a bit of an interesting pick, into the Morphling and Chen and Beastmasters because he's easy to bring down if he doesn't get a quick BKB. It's sort of like a battle of who does their DPS first. And there's that Templar. They banned out that Benno for that reason. So they really want to go aggressive with kills. We're going to see likely a Templar mid, Leshrac Morphling top with the Chen, sort of like a defensive tri lane to get the Morphling farm. And uh, Beastmaster will be pulling on bottom most likely. We can clear that up real quick with the splash damage from the TA. And the axes from the Beastmaster. Some early pings coming out. I'm not sure if there's a level 1 Roshan in the works, or maybe they're just deciding where to have their level 1 skirmish or which wards to get up. Maybe just having a little bit of fun with the pinging on the minimap. The Sand King is the last pick to come out from No Pants Party. So this is most likely going to be a Sand King, Rubik, and Enchantress offensive tri lane on bottom, Bounty Hunter, Solo offlane top, and a Shadow Fiend mid. Although, Blitz is running the Enchantress. Oh no, Blitz is on the Sand King. Blitz Sand King is interesting. I don't know if they're going to try to do something funny, like run the Sand King mid against the Templar Assassin. I guess Sandstorm can burn down Refraction, but I don't really think that's a winning lane for Sand King. But we'll see how it's played out. Blitz just might be really confident. Or maybe we're going to see No Pants Party trying Blitz not in the mid. A little bit uh, non-standard for them. We'll see how it goes. We've got Mikey here, formerly of Quantic, running the Shadow Fiend. Frankie, usually a hard carry, but possibly in a switched up role on the Rubik here today. Agam's going to be doing the solo offlane bounty hunter. Blitz on the Sand King with early wards to start out, so we might even see Blitz in a support role here. And Lust will be running that jungle enchantress. Already with the smoke to get that early gank as soon as she gets a creep or two. We're just going to have both teams kind of defensive warding. We've got Airwave here, also known as Malcolm Entry, on the Beastmaster. He'll be running a suicide offlane most likely. Uh, your boy JC on the Chen, the renowned jungler from Kantu. Tallis playing the hard carry as uh, he often does on the morph. And this Korean dude, I'm not even sure how to pronounce his name. What is it? Uh, Unshi, I don't know, Love Unshi, something like that. 
He'll be on the Leshrac. And finally, Sinai as the Templar Assassin. That'll likely be a, be a mid Templar Assassin based on the quick bottle build we see here. Everybody with the early stout shield, that might signify that he's not necessarily going to be creep or ancient stacking, but we'll see. Leshrac here ready to deward to keep the jungle alive for Chen, but it doesn't look like No Pants Party had any intention of warding it, so we'll see people run off to their lanes. The TA is going to head mid. Airwave will be st or stacking agents in the bottom, or at least trying to, but there's a ward here already by No Pants Party. They weren't ready for any shenanigans. Mikey with the pretty standard necromancy first. He's going to be, uh, no regen actually we see up on him. That's weird. Maybe he's going to be ferrying himself a bottle quickly. Or even potentially sharing a bottle with someone else. I guess he's confident enough against the suicide lane Peacemaster that he doesn't have to worry too much about regen. But he shouldn't get overconfident because without the Enchantress and the Sanking there, Peacemaster could do some damage to him once he gets his levels up. We're going to see Eggum here in solo side lane, uh, Bounty Hunter, just trying to get experience wherever he can. He knows he can't contest the lane or stay in it, especially with sentries up on the slash rack. We're going to see a lot of free farm on the Morphling. I guess this is going to be the most active lane right now with both teams running a suicide solo against the tri lane. Probably not going to be much action in those parts unless someone makes a mistake. Sinai here and Lust, or sorry, and Frankie will both be trying to get their bottles up before the two minute marks. They can bottle that first rune that spawns. This is going to be, I predict it's going to be kind of a tough lane for that Rubik, only because he doesn't have a sort of damage over time spell to deal with refraction. He has a lot of strong burst. Oh, but a big mistake from Sinai, and he might go down to the top. Yeah, he's going down. That's going to be first blood for Frankie in the mid. That should not happen, folks. That was just Sinai was not expecting the telekinesis into the tower, and he was tanking creeps at the same time. So good uh, good awareness there by Frankie to see that the refraction wasn't going to be up to help him. Oh, Eggum's going to have a tough time here with the offensive sentry and observer from Kantu. They really don't want him to get that level 6 up. Again, that early track in the mid-team fights is going to be really good for uh, him to catch up on gold that he's not going to get in his lane. Though he might be able to get some hits under this tower, just because, for some reason, Kantu let the wave push up. Generally, you don't want to do that when you're trying to deny someone any levels. Looks like a strong early start here from No Pants Party. Let's just take a look at the CS. It's predicted uh, Shadow Fiend's just having an easy time against the Beastmaster, even without uh, a presence in the lane from Enchantress or Sanking. Frankie being really aggressive against this uh, TA. I guess he wants to get him to burn all his mana quickly. So he can't really contest him for the rune. Oh, what a big rune to pick up on that on that uh, Rubik mid. It's going to guarantee he can harass that TA back a lot more. And there's not much the TA can do about that. Oh, a tornado creep is up on Lust. You might see a tornado in mid to get rid of the refraction, followed by a stun and, and damage from Frankie once he pops that regen. So we'll see how this Wildkin's used. I wouldn't be surprised if Lust goes for that second kill on that TA. A couple early kills in your solo mid can be devastating for a team. Let's watch Egum putting himself in a lot of jeopardy to try to get some experience and, and gold here. Oh, and a sentry's up. This could be it if Morphling waves over. And Chen's there with a the big nuke. As that uh, test of faith does a completely random amount of damage. It's between 100 and 200 right now, and it looked like he hit for close to 200. I didn't really look at the number, but it was a big nuke coming out of him. Mikey just enjoying this free farm. He's going to have full souls pretty much whenever he's not dead. And for those who don't know, Shadow Fiend, when he gets last hits, either denies or uh, offensive last hits, he gets souls, and each soul gives him plus two damage. He can have a maximum of 36 souls for 72 damage, something like that. Of course, it depends on the level of Necromaster. Right now, it's only a max of 20 souls, which is plus 40 damage. But as you can see, that early game last hitting power from that Shadow Fiend is really tough to deal with, especially when you're in a weak lane like a Suicide Solo. Airwave is just going to try to get some experience himself, maybe try to get a Soul Ring so he can... Well, although they haven't counter-warded this, so the Soul Ring is not even going to be necessary in that lane. I'm surprised they haven't counter-warded those neutrals. They know it sh they should be aware that it's, it's warded and not spawning. Oh, that Leshrac is going to try to pressure this tower now with Edict and the Catapult knowing that Eggum can't do all that much to defend it. Frankie just solidly outlaning and outfarming that TA. 
it's really tough. A TA needs somewhat of an early, uh, a good early game, at least experience-wise, if not gold-wise, so she can start to be a force mid-game. It's just hard for her to get a lot done without a lot of experience or gold, especially because she's practically melee range. Refraction's great, but they have a lot of ways to get rid of that uh, refraction between Sandstorm or uh, Summon Creeps from the Enchantress. Oh, your boy JC, little uh, Chen army with the troll and a centaur. They really want to take this top tower, and they should. This way they can really prevent Eggum from getting experience. He is 5 already. 5 in 5 minutes is really good for a suicide solo, guys. You're supposed to be preventing them from getting experience, especially when you invest heavily in Senshi Wars, as we saw early on from uh, from Con 2. But Eggum does get away with the early experience. He lost his tower, but that's to be expected. Three heroes dedicated to that tower. You gotta count this almost as a loss for the uh, for the Dyer on top. Even the Morphling is not getting a whole lot of farm. He's got 28 in a protected tri lane, whereas the Shadow Fiend's got 39 completely solo. And they're trading. They traded the tier 1. They're not going to be able to trade the tier 2 specifically, but they're going to get a kill on Eggum. Just caught out, standing way too far, knowing that they've been buying Sentry Wards. And the Sentry Wards were visible on the Chen the whole time, too. He should have He should have been clicking. Whenever you're playing a Windwalk or Invis Hero, you need to be aware what kind of items the other other players have, because they have a Sentry. They can catch you out of position, like what just happened there to Eggum. So the good early start from Eggum, kind of culminating in an unfortunate death there for a second death. But again, it's not a big deal. It's only six minutes, and he's almost level six. Pretty good level six to get. Get track, go uh, gank in other lanes, even though you're not the strongest hero because you don't have the levels or, or gold yet to do damage. Just being there for that one initial slow and for that movement speed will get you some track kills, which will get you back in the game.